Okay, that seems to be working. Quick, someone say something funny. Something funny. Hilarious. Something funny. Poop. Welcome down to the abyssal lair of the radiophonic sea creatures. Grab your pressurized scuba gear because I, Tokyo Choo Choo, am going to be your host today. And uh, with me, as always, are two men who love to go skydiving in their underwear. It's Human Metal and Brack. So, Human Metal, how are you recently? Oh, I'm fine. Just returned from a short vacation trip to uh, the Netherlands, so Brack's territory, though we didn't meet up because it still was kind of... Long distance from where he lives, but whatever, it might happen someday. <laughs> Be yeah, prepared. I don't know. I know people think Netherlands is really small, which it is, but it's not it's, that small that I can go like uh, uh, drive like for two hours to meet uh, Human Metal for like yeah, an hour. Exactly. I think the Netherlands is about the size of a like a, a decent sized supermarket in the states. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's like a a, a, a mediocre Walmart. Like that's the, the size of the Netherlands. A mediocre Walmart that you can smoke weed in. That actually sounds pretty good to me. But uh, human metal. I think that's just that's just the Walmart. They don't uh, <laughs> they don't they don't uh, they don't mind if you smoke weed there. <laughs> if only that were true, I'd never be out of Walmart. Um, human metal. For fuck's sake, you're always on vacation. How the how the hell? Are you? <laughs> I don't pay for it. Last time I went to when I went to Scotland, I went with my dad, and for some reason he wanted to, you know. Uh, you know, take over all the expenses and, uh, next trip I went with a friend, like, to the Netherlands, I went with a friend who has a, um, a movable home, whatever you call it, caro- caravan, uh, there. So, uh, we, uh, we actually lived there. So, uh, whatever. What, what you uh, mean it basically is you're in the back of like a police wagon and you were being transported across countries for being exactly. like an international terrorist. Definitely. Obviously, <laughs> but uh, aside from going to uh, the uh, going on a vacation, I saw Interstellar two uh, days ago, and I won't say much because uh, because it's a rather fresh movie and I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, a few thoughts on it. Um, I heard mixed things before I uh, went and see it. That's what, that's what I was kind of reluctant to uh, actually watch it. But then my dad, who I usually go to see movies with. Because he's a big movie guy too. I was like, "Hey, you want to check out Interstellar?" And uh, uh, it sounds interesting. It's a Christopher Nolan movie, and we both pretty much like Christopher Nolan. Uh, Nolan, <laughs> Nolan, except for Dark Knight Rises. Um, what? No, fuck no. That's a great movie. <laughs> yep. No, I, I, I don't, I don't dig it. I liked it, but it was like, it, I think it's his weakest movie. Enjoy. Yeah, it kind of is. But yeah, uh, so we were like, "Okay, let's let's go," <clears throat> uh, even though we end up disappointed. Uh, it's, oh, let's get out the negative, uh, negative things first. Uh, it's a bit long <laughs> for what it's, you know, doing, in my opinion. Uh, it's three hours long. And, uh, so was The Dark Knight Rises. But unlike The Dark Knight Rises, in my opinion, I know, you know, choo choo, you like, but whatever, uh, in my opinion, it turned out to be engaging from beginning to end. Fuck uh, you, human metal. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, come at me, Bane. Uh, Elbert being a bit heavy on the uh, crazy sci-fi concepts and lingo. Um, so if you're not into that stuff, that might be a bit distracting. You're like you're sitting and you're saying, well, what the fuck are they talking about? Uh, but I, I dug it. I, I love the shit out of that. Um, so um, I don't know if you've noticed, but Nolan can do plot very well, like stories and construction of those. But his character writing always feels kind of dry and cold a bit aloof sometimes uh, i don't think so not in all of his movies i not really a, like the characters and like memento and in the prestige but i like the characters in how they interact and how they benefit and move the plot forward but i don't like the characters in itself necessarily like how they how they are developed i might be i might be the only one but they always feel a bit you know distance and cold to me in uh, in, in a lot of his movies 
they work in terms of, like in, in in conjunction with the story and how it's progressing but as you know as characters themselves uh, they f- sometimes feel a bit empty to me but you know if you don't see it that way more power to you because uh that's good um yeah but in terms of my criticisms of that this movie in my opinion uh is a lot better um es- uh, especially when it comes to the mo- uh, of the two the two main characters um I, I like that a lot. I like, you know, their relationship and, uh, you know, how, how it's got developed into the movie and how they, you know, got to interact and stuff and, uh, where he was going with this. Yeah. I, I really liked it this time around. So if you liked, if, if you liked this character writing before, I think you will like it even more in this one. Um, yeah. Uh, last thing I would like to note, I guess, is, um, there's an interesting contrast in the movie, you know, between the scale of the story. And, uh, the way most of the scenes, which is a pretty big story. I won't give anything away, but just the theme of it is pretty big. So, um, the, but the way most of the scenes in this movie are shot, um, yeah, a lot of the drama plays out in, in, in the spaceships and, uh, other constricted or at least very barren places. So there, there's some, there's some impressive imagery here and there, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, to space stuff. But other than that, it's a, most of the time it feels rather small and more like a personal movie most of the time All right. which struck me as odd but not as unwelcome i i kind of mm. liked it actually it was All a nice right. nice contrast so <laughs> yeah i definitely enjoyed the movie i went out much more satisfied satisfied than i expected to be and uh even though it's a bit on the long side i was engaged from beginning to end so um yeah um uh, my recommendation definitely watch that movie i'm uh, gonna try to watch it like uh over the next week. But two important questions. One, mm-hmm. uh, is space like a flat circle for Matthew McConaughey? And does he make like little planets out of beer cans like in the True Detective? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him do that, but there is, there is actually <laughs> a drawing <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, uh, about, uh, that tries to explain, uh, space and, uh, warp travel or something like that on a, on a piece of paper. So. <laughs> Do you know uh, what I like? Some of it in there. Do you know what I like about space? Nope. I get older, and space stays stays the same <laughs> age. Yeah, yeah, that's an amazing show. <laughs> I always loved the space explanation in Event Horizon, where he describes warp holes by making two two <laughs> holes in opposite ends of the paper and then folding the paper together. That's amazing. Um, I you. you it's not a that su- super uh, big surprise and spoiler, but guess what happens in this movie. Uh, <laughs> stolen um, <laughs> stolen by Christopher Nolan <laughs> <laughs> I I actually you were saying you know like uh, SF movies coming down to a more personal scale I really love it when SF movies do that um, I'm thinking and two major SF movies that I, I really loved from recent times would be Solaris and uh, Moon and they were both mm. oh yeah I love Moon I haven't seen Solaris, but I love Moon, yes. Both of those films were absolutely fantastic, like very personal uh, science fiction stories based completely around the character, you know, in a larger mm. situation, but like absolutely amazing stuff. And for me personally, I'm really love, I'm really looking forward to uh, watching Interstellar. I'm a huge fan of deep, deep thought provoking, you know, deep thinking, geekish science fiction movies like 2001 and Solaris and Moon. I just, I love, I love that shit. So, uh, Interstellar is a, yeah, I, I expect I will. So the only, the only thing, negative thing for me is my expectations are sky high. So I oh, also, okay. <laughs> I also love everything Christopher Nolan has made, including The Dark Knight Rises, um, which I actually think is the best of the Batman trilogy. Brack oh. and I, yeah, Brack and I have gone round <laughs> and round on this a couple of times, but <laughs> I won't get even into that. I would just say you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think you're wrong as well. But I uh, disagree with you, human metal. And oh, that's no. fine. I, I, we will I do we love can discuss, voice, we discuss it on the another day. Yeah. But not on this show. The not man with the show. crab on his face disagrees. Um, so, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to Interstellar. So, how about you, Brack? What have you uh, been up to just recently? Uh, not that much, but I've been reading uh, this comic book, uh, which is uh, Old Man Logan, which is uh, a, a Wolverine comic book, and I was just. Uh, I like the Wolverine character. I was watching the movie, uh, like, uh, not uh, Wolverine Origins, no. I was watching, like, uh, uh, First Class and uh, 
Days of Future Past like a couple of weeks back. And I was like, you know what? I've never actually read like March uh, Wolverine comics. So I was looking forward like online for what's are the best Wolverine comics. And one of those was Old Man Logan, which is <laughs> a really, really weird comic because it's uh, kind of like, uh, no, it's not kind of like, it's completely unforgiven, like from with Wolverine in like the Clint Eastwood role. Fuck. And it's, and it's like post apocalyptic at the same time. So yeah, it's like, pretty cool. After, like, the, the super villains have all teamed up and just destroyed, like, all the heroes. Only a few are left. One of them is, is Wolverine. And he actually, uh, he doesn't want to use, be violent anymore. He just wants to, like, take care of his family and just uh, live a simple life, like, farming in, like, the, the post-apocalyptic wasteland. But, uh, yeah, he, he, he needs money. And, uh, of course, he has to pay off the Hulk gang, which is a gang of, like, inbred Hulk, uh, uh, like grandkids from the Hulk, which is kind of insane. They're like inbred rednecks, only they are like green and uh, and muscular and huge. So, what the hell? Yeah, it's it's a really weird comic. And uh, then wait, 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 did, did the Hulk fuck his sister? Ooh, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> or his, or his co- wait, wait who is she Hulk? Is she his cousin or was, yes, were they not related cousin. at all? She's his cousin. And yes, you're right. That's that that happened. That's happened in the in the <laughs> <story. laughs> Well it makes uh, sense. I mean who else could his could take his giant green dick, so Yeah. yeah it's yeah, gotta yeah. be Jen. Yeah. He and uh, and uh, Hawkeye who is blind in the in the storyline travel around uh like the America to deliver like this package and they just run in all the ground stuff. And uh, this is a comic by Mark Miller of no. Mark Miller, which uh, he makes a lot of cool concepts with his comics, but he really loves to be ultra violent and just really a- a- excessive violence just didn't to he, shock didn't people. Did you read Black Summer or am I mixing that up? He, he read, he wrote like uh, Kick Ass and Wanted yeah. and. Uh, kick, both Kick Ass and Wanted, those movies are kind of tame, but those comics are like really yeah. brutal. I like the comic of Kick, kick Ass much more. It, uh... Oh, I liked, I liked the movie more. I didn't like the comic really? at all. Didn't he? I really? The comic was just really like. It was, the, the twist was crying, kind of crazy, but it felt more like what the. What the comic set up to do in terms of where it was going with its message, like basically, it was just really he just tr- really tried to shock people, and that's what he no, no, does. I feel a like lot. he was literally, cr- uh, literally is the wrong word, but he was cr- uh, trying to criticize and make fun of nerd culture and basically the concept of uh, people wanting to be superheroes and what would happen if you I like the are concept. such a fucking nerd that you would turn your kid into a su- uh, into a fucking super assassin, and the movie. At, at the midpoint, it turns around and, you know, glo- make, makes this, uh, g- um, wait, what's the word? Glory sizes? No, um, glorifies, uh, glorif- glorif- glorifies the, uh, the outcome of what that, but because, you know, kick ass gets the girl, uh, everybody is kind of happy. It, 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 you get a happy ending in the comic. This is completely different. Like, yeah, but in the he comic, gets a re- fucking restraining order. In the comic, from, from they the betray. <laughs> in the comic, they betray. He betrays his own concept as well because, like, in the in the in the in the comic, like, yeah, superheroes don't exist except for like Hit Girl and Big Daddy, who are just like the Punisher only times twelve. Uh, so uh, the comic he portrays his own concept a bit as well, but no, they, I, I yeah, think but he makes superheroes. I think he has good concepts, like like the the kick ass concept is great and it's really uh, yeah. iconic. But he doesn't really know what to do with it most of the times, and he really makes like ex- really violent, really mean spirit. That like the wanted comic is just like you should. It's not fun to read. It's kind of fun to read at the beginning, but he just like. Uh, he just like throws rape in there like a lot just to, yeah. to shock like the uh, uh, the the reader and he does the, some sort of the same things in like Old Man Logan which I didn't really like uh, that much but Wait, who did Wolverine rape? He doesn't rape anybody but they're like death yeah, rape. There is by no- the Hulk. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Wolverine uh, raped by the Hulk. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to read. It doesn't get raped by the Hulk, but the Hulk uh, does uh, does something horrible to him. But like he really like the incest story with like the Hulk, and there's, he just wants to be so shocking that you remember it without anything there to like uh, to justify that mm. most of the time. But it's in general this was still like 
a fun comic, and it has, yeah, sometimes I just like uh, some really violent stuff, and this has some really gruesome kills by Wolverine to, like, some uh, other Marvel characters, which is, like, kind of amazing. Like, at one point, he uh, cuts off a guy's head with Captain America's shield. He just he throws him at the ground and puts like Captain America shield at the guy's neck and he just pushes his head off. It's like that's kind of amazing, even though it's it's just really uh, it's just really like a B movie. It's like really like a B horror movie, like how violent it is at times. It's still worth a read. It's it's uh, really easy reading. It's it really fast paced and uh, fun to read, but it's not really uh, anything behind it. It's no uh, it doesn't have a message or anything. It's just like pure violence and just uh, over the topness. Mm. I think the under the uh, unforgiven template is a really really good thing uh, to go by and yields a lot of results. So like when you think of things that stick to that template of you know a reluctant warrior um, who's trying to get on with a peaceful life coming back to deal with some threat or whatever, it usually works really well. I mean you think of the great westerns like Shane for example is an absolutely amazing example of it and uh, unforgiven itself. And even in comic books, um, I think the Dark Knight Returns uh, has an element of that, doesn't it? Because literally, the yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that storyline kind of fits Wolverine as well because he he is like a killing machine, and he's like at points in the comics as well and in the movies he's kind of like uh, ashamed for his past of his past, and it's they they multiply that in this uh, in this comic book. So uh, myself, I have quite a lot of things on the agenda. I'm gonna I'm gonna cover them. Mostly uh, briefly. So the first one will be Binding of Isaac. So I downloaded that on PS Plus. It's a it's a roguelike game. Um, so procedurally generated, uh, kind of twin stick shooter sort of, a bit like Smash TV, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, oh man, that game's just great. It changes every time you play it, and it's always a challenge to try and get to the end. Sometimes you die within five seconds. Other times you get really far. Um, I haven't quite completed it yet, but it has that. It's one of those games that gives me, like Pix the Cat, gives me a burning desire to achieve a higher score or to get further um, each time I play it. And it's one of those games I'm absolutely fucking determined to get to the end of. Because yeah, it just it's just awesome. Yeah, I played it as well, and uh, it's one of those games that's beforehand I had no interest in at all. Like even after like people raving about it and great reviews and like watching gameplay. I didn't really see the appeal until I played it myself, and I really, uh, I really started to enjoy it. And it's really addictive, and it has points where I'm like really angry that I died like really far <laughs> in, and like fuck, fuck this game. And like half an hour later, I'm still, I'm, I'm play, I started to play it again. It, it, it itched the, the itch gaps me again. So it's, uh, it's a really good game. Yeah, it's, it's totally awesome, and it, it really makes me wish I fucking had my Vita. Uh, to play it. So, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! So te- a fucking terrible thing that happened to me. I lost my PlayStation Vita. So I was traveling back from Tokyo, and I'm not sure where exactly I misplaced it or lost it. But it was either on the bus or the train. But that fucker's gone. And he's not coming back. Oh, <laughs> and the thing that's is, sorry to hear that. Yeah, do you, do you know what the, the fucking total bastard fucking bullshit thing of it is, right? apart from losing an expensive piece of kit, for one, is the fact that throughout this year, I've had nothing to play on my Vita. Nothing that's even interested <laughs> me, almost remotely, to play. And suddenly, I got Pix the Cat and Binding of Isaac. And I'd love to play both of those fuckers on the Vita. And I can't fucking do it because I've got no Vita no more. Ah, oh, come oh. on. Oh, Son of a man, That sucks ass. I will think of you when I play Binding of Isaac and Pix the Cat on my Vita. <laughs> And I will How think nice. of you dying underneath the wheels of a train when I next play Binding of Isaac, you cunt. Um, totally. It really sucks. I I, I, uh, I had that fear as well a couple of times that I forgot my feet on the train or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, I never did, luckily. The thing is, I hope that someone has it, actually, out in and Japan. And is enjoying it. Like, yeah. <laughs> And is loving the shit out of it. Like, oh man, I found this Vita on the train. I'm so fucking lucky. And I, I really hope that someone has it as enjoying the shit out of it. And it's not just sitting in a lost and found somewhere in a, in a fucking yeah, it's, like, it's some, train station. Some douche back that found it and is trying to sell it online or something like that. You hope like like a 12 year old kid found it and is like playing by the guys like right now. Even though a 12 year old kid should be playing by the guys like, because that game is kind of fucked up. Wow. Yeah. 
Although it did have a lot of kinky pictures of my girlfriend on the Vita. Like, seriously, I'm not joking. So if I find those... Wait, I don't think you can transfer pictures in the internet. Oh, man, if, if, if you can, like, my girlfriend's going to be pissed. Anyway, I don't think I should... Actually, when I, I bought that Vita, I used, and it had, like, pictures on it as well. From, like, uh, this guy making pictures of his girlfriend uh, on the <laughs> with his Vita. Like, when I bought my Vita, I used to, like, pictures on it, a lot of them. Was she hot? Not really. Son of a <laughs> Well, my girlfriend is hot, so... Um, <laughs> At least you're honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, um, moving on, because I, I got a, a few other things to, to cover. So, recently, my PlayStation 4 is really coming into effect. So, um, I've got a couple games incoming. So, I've got uh, the Alien Isolation for my birthday, which is uh, in a couple weeks that's going to come. And, uh, uh, like, a week after that, I've got Grand Theft Auto V, the new version which I've decided to pick up, which is actually going to be uh, delivered. And then for Christmas, I got Far Cry 4, like those three major PS4 games. So with those games incoming, I think the PS3 is going to start taking uh, a lot less, yeah, a lot less play from me, basically. So I started to look back and decide which games I really, really want to replay from the PS3 library before the, the PlayStation, you know, gets gets basically overshadowed by the PS4. So strangely on my list was uh warhammer 40,000 space marine you know with, really yeah with all the classics like red dead redemption and journey and my my goddamn my beloved bioshock infinite somehow warhammer 40,000 is for me is a really special game for me it was the only game in the history of the choo choo uh, and the PlayStation 3 that I actually finished and then immediately restarted and finished again on a higher difficulty setting. It it was a really special game for me. I love the mechanics. The game mechanics are absolutely perfect. Um, the story is fantastic. Uh, it's a very simple story. It's like a mission that slowly goes wrong and you have to deal with the escalating circumstances. But it all makes sense. It's got a wonderful voice cast led by Mark Strong. And it has, like, for me... The number one most memorable cutscene of the last generation, which, you know, anybody who's played that game to completion will know, which is the, I'm not finished with you, Space Marine, but I am finished with you, Orc. <laughs> I so Wait, at what point this. happened that? Because I really, I think I played most of it, but I never finished it, I think. It's one of I the, didn't really care about it all that much. The final boss Orc. When you defeat him, he's like laying there kind of semi crippled and says that line and then Mark Strong says his line, walks away and then without glancing back, just turns his pistol and blows the guy's fucking head off. It's just amazingly badass. Does one of those wicked strolls towards the camera, you know, usually when an explosion is going off behind him. But it's just like one of the most badass moments in, in like video game for me. It's just so awesome. I just I just I have. It's like that movie Doom. I like that movie. Nobody else likes it. Everybody hates it. I like it. Space Marine is one of those games that somehow I just fucking love beyond beyond. I mean, it even turned me to, to towards like the the Warhammer forty thousand like battle novels, which I read one of and was quite fun actually. So <laughs> really, yeah, it it totally set off geek alarms in my in my brain. So <laughs> oh, hey, that's not that's not a bad thing. You yeah, be ashamed of that. Exactly, exactly. So I just I love Space Marine and I'm replaying it now and it's as fun as it was the first two times I played it and I'm having a shit ton of fun with it and I'm just going to complete it again. So amazing. Um, the last thing on the list, the, the one thing I've spent too much time talking about that crap, but the one thing I want to talk about, which is driving me fucking crazy, is the Grand Budapest Hotel. So I'm a huge, huge huge fan of Wes Anderson like he is my favorite writer director I think I feel the same way about Wes Anderson that many people feel about you know many old skanky hobos and ancient people who eat fucking porridge for dinner because they can't eat anything solid feel about Woody Allen so (laughs) (laughs) what the fuck (laughs) are you talking about (laughs) I I thought I was totally missing what you were going for but I said Woody Allen like uh, I don't get uh, the Woody Allen love as well (laughs) Well, well, many people feel, you know, that Woody Allen, you know, speaks to them, is very special to them. Wes Anderson is like my hero for that. I just, I love his movies. I have all eight of his movies on Blu-ray. They're just, well, not Bottle Rocket because it's not even available on Blu-ray, but they're just, they're amazing. I love them. They're, they're extremely special. And usually when I, when I get into the mood, I watch all of his movies, like kind of back to back. Um, not on the same day, obviously, because that's just stupid. But um, one day after the other. 
And the Grand Budapest Hotel, I feel, is his masterpiece. It's absolutely fucking hilarious. It's incredibly moving for me. And uh, bizarrely, it's got a lot of action in it, a lot of grisly murders and a lot of people firing guns and stuff and like assassinations. That movie is one of those movies that I instantly know I will be watching many, many, many times over many, many years. Like, it's just fucking fantastic. I'm really happy you're saying that because I also really like uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. And I think it's my uh, my favorite or second favorite like Wes Anderson movie besides like the fantastic Mr. Fox, which I just uh, really enjoy. I know a lot of like Wes Anderson fans who think this is like weaker than like uh, Moonrise Kingdom, no. which I uh, disagree with. I think that was one of his uh, lesser movies. Ah, oh, Moonrise Kingdom. I think I think that made me cry the most, definitely. I'm a bit of a pussy when it comes to crying, but that definitely got me welling up, uh, the Moonrise Kingdom. But man, Grand Budapest Hotel is just a shit ton of fun. It's so, so fun. I mean, it, it made me laugh so hard. I love the fact that the main character is such a polite toff, and yet he's got such a potty mouth, such a foul mouth. Like, and his swearing is some of the most hilarious swearing in, in, in recent movies. Just unexpected. And also, also, Ralph Fiennes not playing a bad guy. This is the episode about people that usually play bad guys not being a bad guy, being the protagonist. Yeah, that that is that's amazing, though. Like, I remember my wife saying, like, she can't believe that that's the same guy who played Voldemort. And I'm like, yeah, he is great in that movie. He is really he takes all the attention away. He is perfect in that movie. That's that was a hilarious movie. I really like that one. And uh, or with that recommendation, let's move on to the depth. Welcome back to the depths. So today. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. But Human Metal looks a bit, little bit peaky. I think he has Ebola. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about the end of the fucking world. Yes. So question one to you guys. So with the apocalypse in mind, which apocalypse do you have the most chance of surviving? And yeah, well, how would you do it? So how about you, Brack, being a big fan of uh, Apocalypse in general, especially when you're creating it? How would you go about surviving the Apocalypse? And what Apocalypse would you survive? So the Apocalypse I'm going to survive, I'm going to spoil a movie, which is uh, the Tom Cruise movie Oblivion. And if you want to watch a good Tom Cruise science fiction movie, go watch Edge of Tomorrow and skip Oblivion. Fuck you, Oblivion rocks! Really? <laughs> I love Oblivion. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so I'm going to spoil the apocalypse in Oblivion. But I first going to say that I think each of one, any one of us, can take out Tom Cruise single-handedly. Like Tom Cruise, he's like small. I mean, yeah. if they made a Happy Meal toy out of Tom Cruise, it would be like a life-size statue. That's small. <laughs> that's small he is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, I think so. I think everybody can take out at least one Tom Cruise. So that's the way I think you're going to survive the Tom Cruise apocalypse. At least that's how I'm going to call it. Because if you watch the, the movie, uh, Oblivion, Tom Cruise is like uh, an astronaut. And he gets like, there he is in the, uh, uh, he gets cloned by aliens. And the aliens send like armies of Tom Cruises down to Earth to take over the world. That's li literally what happens in that movie. And they don't show it, which is a shame, because if that was the case, that would be one of the best movies of all time. I would love to see a movie about, like, armies of Tom Cruises taking over the world. That would be amazing. <laughs> but they just tell it in, like, a, a, in a voiceover by Morgan Freeman. So if Morgan Freeman says it in a voiceover, you know that shit is serious. Mm -hmm. But what I'm talking about, like, Tom Cruise is really small. I think everybody in the world can take out at least one Tom Cruise. So we can take out those armies of Tom Cruises. Like, I think there are rednecks in, like, America just waiting for a chance to shoot Tom Cruise. And they're just going to get their wish. So I think that's the way we're going to survive, like, uh, the Tom Cruise apocalypse. <laughs> Since uh, Morgan Freeman is narrating the whole th uh, whole thing in, uh, in Oblivion, I wonder if uh, in the concept stage it was... Uh, uh, a sci-fi sequel to much of the penguins where <laughs> the aliens clone penguins and set them down to kill everyone. 
March just, of as, the just, as, just as effective as Tom Cruise would be. Yeah. March of the Cruises. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, it's, it's going to be great. Fantastic. Oh, I love Oblivion. Like, seriously, I, I love that movie. It's. I think Tom Cruise is doing great things for science fiction recently. So, you know, between... He's, he's ob- kind of savior. Yeah, exactly. I actually agree with you on that. Even though Oblivion was a bit of a miss for me, I still kind of liked it. It had beautiful cinematography. And it was that kind of... Un- amazing. It was still kind of unconventional in terms of what it tr- was trying to do with story and stuff. And was. Yeah. It was not a franchise or anything. It was just a sci-fi movie, uh, 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 an original sci-fi movie, uh, and you don't see that many. It was an original sci-fi movie because it felt like they took bits and pieces of all yeah. kinds of sci-fi movies and yeah, just yeah, pushed yeah. it back okay. together <laughs> and just threw out like some of that Hollywood glance on top of it. That yeah, was- but still. There was definitely a huge element of Moon in there. I mean, they ripped that pretty much wholesale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but still, it was a, it was a fun movie. But I really wish they just spent it way more time on like Tom Cruise armies taking over the world. I, I'm going to agree with you, Brack. Actually, so to be quite frank, I am not keen on post-apocalyptic stuff. Like I really, really am not. I, in fact, I, I actively kind of avoid that shit. But uh, I would agree with you. That, that Oblivion would be my apocalypse that I would survive. And, you know, you're saying it's easy to kill one Tom Cruise. So I would kill one Tom Cruise. And then I would spend the rest of my short-ass life before the rest of the Tom Cruises got me. Yeah, like, gang, you know, <laughs> gang killed me with knives or whatever. Like, <laughs> I would spend the rest of my short-ass life fucking the shit out of those two women that were in that movie. Because, God damn, they were hot. I mean, yeah, Jesus. the less two women on Earth and if those both falling for Tom Cruise, lucky bastard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all you got to do is get that small-ass midget out the way and show them what a real man looks like, and then bang, you're home free. So, like, like banging a hot-ass kind of Asian-ish looking, like, Russian bird and, like, the hottest... I swear, I'm an Englishman. Girls that hot don't actually exist in England. I think she's actually some kind of weird Terminator prototype or something, but that ginger girl... Jesus H. Christ. I mean, she is... You still, have to, you still have to take care of Jamie Lannister, who is also in the movie. That actor was in the movie as well. But he's trying to kill Tom Cruise, isn't he? Why would he be interested in me? I mean, yeah, sure. yeah. hey, but still, if Jamie Lannister is between me and a good lay, Jamie Lannister is going down. Like, whichever way you slice it, like... <laughs> <laughs> slice it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you watch the Game of Thrones... The, the, the slice it is kind of funny. Oh, yeah. man. Please don't ruin season four for me. I haven't seen it. I'm waiting for the DVD release. Please don't tell me if Jamie Lannister gets his cock or his head cut off. Um, Wait, you didn't even you, you made that joke without even knowing it. That's kind of great. That's kind of amazing. Oh, shut the fuck up, Brack! Shut up! <laughs> oh, man. So how about you, Human Middle? What, what, yeah, what apocalypse would you have the most chance of surviving? And how would you do it? I'm going to go the totally boring and safe route and say the new Ice Age. Uh, at least if we adhere to the rules established by the great auteur Roland Emmerich in Day After Tomorrow, where the whole thing only lasts a few weeks or something. <laughs> so we we basically just need to move a bit closer to the equator or underground in time, take a lot of canned food with us, and apparently we'll be fine because it's all going to go away after a few weeks and we have super clean air and everybody's going to be fine. Maybe we need to run away from creeping frost through hallways a few yeah. times. I really love that movie. It's like a chase scene from like the weather. It is like a weather chase scene. The weather is the, people is the running fucking... away from like cold weather. It's yeah, crazy. the weather is the fucking is the fucking serial killer in that movie. It's like, oh my god, what's gonna come up next? What's what's what plan uh, to kill the people? Is it is the weather gonna devise next? Oh, it's gonna freeze. Like, <laughs> basically free stuff in seconds, so you have to run away from the front. Fucking amazing. So, well, yeah, but it's <laughs> over pretty quickly. So if we just, you know, get to a place that's a bit warmer and, you know, cramp, you know, move move a bit together and, uh, you know, then uh, and have a lot of uh, food Sex. reserves, we will be fine. Also, we probably want uh, Dennis Quaid to still be alive. Yeah, sex is the way to go, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I think we got uh, if we if we you know experience that apocalypse, we got pretty good chances to survive it. At least Sex. you know if 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 the world and the rules of nature follow uh, 
Yeah, so, yes, you know, the, the Book of Roland Emmerich. You have a chance of surviving <laughs> compared to, like, the other Roland Emmerich movies, like 2012. <laughs> Yeah, 2012, pretty shitty odds there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> pretty bad odds. Yellowstone National Park. Oh, damn. <laughs> the day after tomorrow, you just have to uh, run away from the cold and just hide in the library for like a couple of weeks and it's, yeah, yeah, it's and you're you okay. Fire in the stove because that's going to keep the cold yeah. out. And stick together. <laughs> you have to stick together. Otherwise, the yeah, weather will pick you off one by one like in a real horror movie. I, yeah. I I actually want to go through like the day after tomorrow. I mean, you think about it, right? You, you say to some hot girls, "Hey, <laughs> the hot girls out of oblivion, preferably." Hey, shit, the winter's coming. We need to stick together for bodily warmth. I have a nice electric blanket in my <laughs> in my apartment, which is behind several walls and has a nice library. If your catchphrase, you know, if you if your go to phrase to to uh, you know hit on a girl is the winter is coming and you're one of the stars and you know that won't end well for you, like not at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. don't go there. But I actually, in in the day of tomorrow, I actually kind of expected the wind to wear like a hockey mask while it's killing people because that's how <laughs> much of a serial killer it was in the movie. Uh. <laughs> Something Winter hurts. War Heat. You're next. What's what's your you know apocalypse of choice? I, I already told you. I, I would go with Brack. You have to have your own you choice. Lazy. <laughs> um, let me think. But, uh, don't you do you have a, a, a zombie survival? Uh, all right. Plan. I tell you what. I would go for the world's end. Okay. So um, polite, very polite aliens come down and basically they're trying to uh assimilate humankind into a kind of like a polite race where everybody's efficient and stuff and they seem very uh how would i say pliant to to try and get you know to try and win your confidence so i would spend my time fucking the shit out of any women that would possibly let me and there's that scene in the club where they're you know they're dancing with the sexy women so i get the i get the kind of impression that they were kind of trying to tempt the guys to come at time kind of like come over to their side through that like i'd be down for that i'd i'd be of the mind that no i don't want to join them but you know i'd kind of manipulate it to my own yeah but, but simon peck is going to fuck it all up for you he's just yep. gonna uh, yell at the aliens so much and just that's, scream with them and then they're gonna explode itself or something like that that's i kind of forgot what the happened in the world sense that's why i'd murder his bum ass out the back <laughs> i just take him out i say simon come here mate come here i got i got something to show you <laughs> And then he's out. He's gone. And I go back in there and I dance with like the the girl who's coming on to me and like the girl who's coming on Simon Pegg. I'd be like, come here, girl. You, yeah. You're of legal age. And even if you're not, it doesn't matter. You're an alien. Legal age doesn't matter when you're aliens. See? That's what they say in Mexico. <laughs> with the, the, <laughs> on the Mexican border. <laughs> Wait, they say that? I'm going there. <laughs> really? Uh, no, uh, no, seriously, no. I don't want to end up in a fucking duffel bag in some river. So. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> yeah, I did that last summer. It wasn't fun. Um, so we're going to move on to the second question, the second and last question. So yeah, if the world has to end, absolutely has to end in a blaze of glory, which apocalypse? Would you guys pick? So, how about you, Brack? How are you feeling? What what apocalypse would you would you love to go out in a blaze of glory in? Like yeah, a blaze of fire, more like it, because I'm uh, picking for motherfucking dragons, just dragons, just killing everybody. <laughs> and I'm talking about <laughs> the movie Raid of Fire. I know a lot of people don't like it, but it has Batman and uh, uh, and uh, the guy from 300 and Matthew. All right, all right, all right. But gonna just kicking the ass of some dragons. So that's 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 a great film. That's that sounds like a great time, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, in that movie, dragons are like the the end all being of like badasses, and they uh, they killed all the dinosaurs. And every like couple of million years, they just uh, awake and they just burn the world to ash and eat everybody, and then uh, yeah, they fall asleep again until the world rebuilds again. And yeah, if you have to go in a in a place of glory, like dragons, that's the, that's the coolest thing ever, right? Just some giant ass dragons uh, burning you in like a second. It doesn't even hurt all that much. So uh, I'm going with dragons. That's the cool answer. I, I have a second answer. Seeking a friend for the end of the world. In that movie, uh, they know the world's gonna end in like a couple of weeks. 
So everybody's just gonna have like sex parties and do a lot of drugs, and that's like that's that's that movie. That's what the movie does. So that's like the perfect uh, the, the perfect end, the perfect end of the world, right? If they go out <laughs> in one way, that's the right way. But it's not as cool as fucking dragons. That yeah. sounds like something Chuchu would cook up. Like yes. <laughs> You're talking my language now. That's 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 where I live every day. Hey, I treat every day like it's the end of the world. Actually, seriously, on on, on the subject of the end of the world, um, me and my friend a couple of years ago, what was it? The end of the Mayan calendar. So me and my friend decided we were actually going to treat that like it was the end of the world. What would we do on the end of the world? So we had a good think about it, and eventually, yeah, we got we got shit face drunk. To the point where we couldn't stand and we're puking in the loo bowl. To the point where I actually had to take off the next day off of work. Got fucking moaned at by my boss. Threatened to be fired by my boss. And had to travel on the train to work. And then was sick on the train station in front of everybody who fucking legged it away from me. Like I had Ebola or something. And then I got to work, which was an hour away. The manager at work said, fucking hell, go home. And then I had to go all the way back home, get recalled by my <laughs> boss. And my boss said, I heard you went home. It's like, I didn't choose to go home. I was fucking sent home by the manager. Oh, son of a bitch. So that's apparently what happens actually at the end of the world. You get just rat ass <laughs> drunk and sick all over the train station in front of everybody. And it is one of the most embarrassing things that ever happened in your life. So <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, sure sounds apocalyptic to me. <laughs> Yeah, it is the end of your world, almost. <laughs> at least in a very personal way, yes. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, I was actually drunk at the train station on my way to work to teach children, so I might have actually fallen off to the railway tracks. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have noticed, but... Well, but at the... least you didn't step on the third rail like your cousin. Well, no. Uh, uh, fuck you, human metal. <laughs> <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, well, actually, in Japan there is no no third rail, but it's yeah. Anyway, oh, but good for you, just to just to touch on Rain of Fire, Brack, that's a fucking awesome movie, a criminally underrated movie. And yes, I agree with that. Matthew McConaughey is pretty goddamn great in that movie. He yeah, is he, so entertaining to watch. Hilarious, he's fucking hilarious in that movie. He's Bring like, down the beast. He's the completely complete antithesis to, to all the characters he's played before that. Like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna be the uber hard ass now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? They is really this? baked out dragons by jumping out of like out of helicopters and like with <laughs> metal. And he's bald like, and he's like this beard and yeah, it looks it looks amazing. I think in one scene he kills a dragon by jumping like out of a helicopter with an axe and just <laughs> just heck, yeah, and that's that's, that's how he dies. Yeah, yeah, that's how he yeah. dies. Cool. He one of the, at the big. That's the big, like the coolest way to die ever, right? Yeah, yeah it on. is. Totally, one of the one of the great death scenes in cinema. That 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 axe jumping scene, amazing. I didn't like the mothership solution that is prevalent in so many movies these days. Like you have this one target, and if you kill that, everything else is gonna be you know it's, it's gonna be solved. Like yeah, all but the other dragons will die no because they can procreate and stuff. Otherwise, there's no fighting all those dragons. Yeah, exactly. Like, otherwise, there's no the solution. Thing, yeah, they did the same thing in uh, Avengers. They did the same thing in Edge of Tomorrow, basically. So It's so it's, sexist. It's like, it's like yeah. hey, all the females don't mean shit. You kill the one male that's alive, yeah. problem solved. Yeah, but but I still like the movie despite that. And what I really liked was this um, bit where they... Um, Gerald Butler dies, gets burned by the flames. <laughs> that too. No, but the, uh, <laughs> they are at, at the refugee castle... And they play like this theater a bit. They play like Star uh, Wars. Yeah, it's about this night, right. and 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 after a while, you realize they're playing Star Wars, and, and then there comes the scene from The Empire Strikes Back. Like, no, I am your father, and all the little kids in the audience. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's, it's it so like, cute. Yeah, that's, that's really amazing. awesome. It was a pretty nice little twist in there, and I, I really like that. That's that's that that was a pretty cool idea. I, I like that movie. I think it's underrated too. It's fun. So how about you, Human Metal? If the world had to end in a blaze of glory, which apocalypse? Apocalypse is really hard to say when you're a little drunk. Which apocalypse <laughs> would you choose? Uh, I'm gonna go the super nerd way and say fighting uh, kaiju like in Pacific Rim or other aliens, harnessing the awesome power of giant mech suits. Yes, uh, right, Max. or any you know like in Pacific Rim or any other super robot anime ever. So. Yeah, I want to go out like Roy Fokker and Macross or Kamen and Gurren Lagann, like ripping Same. apart 
Road Roy Fucker? Fucker. R- Roy Fucker. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> He's a big <laughs> ass. He's basically you. You should watch that. You should watch that movie. Um, Talking about cool names, the, the characters in Pacific Rim have some awesome names, like yeah. Stacker Pentecost, uh, like uh, with Idris Elba. <laughs> That's a cool name. It sounds so silly, but it's such a cool name. Yeah, Animal but, Chow. With yeah. Oh Robert. God. Yeah, but uh, yeah, ripping apart big, uh, a big disgusting monster with my dying breath. Leaving this world with a badass one-liner, or just you know a rage vomit scream of pure unfiltered hatred, while you know, <laughs> like like Matthew McConaughey did with that dragon at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah, basically something like that, you know, like going on like a total badass. If I have to go, I would like to go like that. You know, that would be and not like a, a cheap comedy sidekick character, but yeah, that that would be my my apocalypse of choice. Like that would be awesome. I, I, I I'm like a scrambled version of yours. I mean, hey, seriously. My apocalypse would be something along the lines of, I don't know, the world just gets invaded by like really, really sexy women, like like hot as shit women. And so I don't think there's a movie like that or a video game or something like that. No, but there should be. Hear me out. There should be. Hey, dude, where is my car? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, women, though. <laughs> but basically, yeah, the women come and um, hey, the sex box from Austin Powers, right? I guess they actually, what they actually, were bent on. I yeah. know, uh, I know the movie. I know the movie, man. Uh, there is this. It's, uh, really it's nice. a shitty movie. It's from Michael Bay, of course. Uh, in one of the Transformers, uh, there's like this uh, Decepticon which turns into a hot girl. Oh yeah, the Decepti slut. Yeah. Yeah, he that's if they just made like armies of those and set those down, the world would go down in like a second, right? Yeah, fuck Instead of out. giants like robot cars, like set uh, all those like uh, sexy robot girls down. Yeah, or the T X from Terminator Three. Death by Deceptive Slot. That's that's <laughs> deceptive. Deceptive slots. Actually, I've known a few of those actually, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, deceptive slut. Like, oh uh, hey, hey, let's let's cut out the sexism. I am a deceptive slut, okay? So <laughs> but, you know, you know. <laughs> we are aware. But yeah, hey, if there was a great death, that's what I'd go for. Like death by hot women, preferably, preferably multiple hot women. Although I am getting older. Um. Anyway, so you have to make it count while it still lasts. Yeah. Well, there's a little lead left in your pencil. You know what I'm talking about? So that's a little bit, <laughs> little, the... a little bit of the rock there, which is exactly what I would have if that happened. A huge fucking rock. But um, anyway, aside from that, if we're going to talk about actual things, I know, I know it's not quite the end of the world, but when I imagine my death, like if I could have like a death, you know, and I absolutely had to die, I would love, I would fucking love to go out like Hudson. In aliens, I know that's not quite the end of the world, but he does die, and many people die. So if there were aliens or monsters or kaiju, I just want to grab the biggest fucking machine gun I could ever fucking find, and then spout out the rudest fucking filthy potty mouth crap that I could do. Yeah. Die, motherfucker! Fuck you! You know, ah, you fucking <laughs> bastard! You know, whatever. I can't, I can't do it cool because I'm British, and unless I say the word <laughs> cunt. I don't sound cool, but like, you know, in America, die motherfucker or whatever, you know, just like go and take as many of those bastards with me as I could. And they go out in a blaze of glory. And then the people who survived, you know, after they survived, they'd be like, fucking hell. Do you see how that guy went out? Fuck. He took like a hundred of them with him and he went out so cool. Oh, wow, I wish I died just like him. Like, I want to be that fucking guy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I probably die carrying the corner playing. Please, please don't eat me. I'm not tasty. <laughs> 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 yeah that's how i'm gonna die like every like there was apocalypse movies like with with zombie movies everybody thinks they're gonna live to the end but like i'm like one of the second the second person to go like the first hey, if, like, if the aliens drop tomorrow like and knock at my door i have a replica katana here i'm gonna make good use of that's a promise you fuckers yeah <laughs> but i hate to tell you this <laughs> it's a replica <laughs> Yeah. I don't give a shit. Sweet uh, with an, it's it's sharp enough. I actually cut on on it, myself on it twice accidentally. So if I swing it with enough force, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can decapitate a fucking alien. Even though the even the uh, the acid blood might fucking melt off my face, but I will fucking take his head off. I tell you what, yeah, I, actually, I could throw a GameCube at them, and that's I don't think that's gonna do much. <laughs> you know, murdered by Nintendo. 
I tell you what, the the actual I say to my wife often, I swear to God, our kitchen knife, which is made of plastic here, is the sharpest thing known to man. <laughs> like you, you you even touch that thing, it slices your half your finger off. Like washing it, like washing that fucking thing, you know, when you're washing the plates and stuff, it's yeah. like a game of Russian roulette. Will you slice your finger off? <laughs> is like, it made by the guy from, like, Kill Bill, like, in the first movie? Like, some old Japanese guys, like, making yeah. it, like, in the, big, the back room? Kitchen. Yeah. Maybe that's that's a, that's how he subsidizes himself. He makes badass samurai swords, and on the He has to he make makes... money somewhere, right? He yeah, can, exactly. Uh, he, can, he can make a living from uh, all these you know, uh, samurai swords. And the sushi shop he owns, yeah. He basically makes, like, plastic kitchen knives that are so fucking sharp if you're not paying attention you will slice off. seriously I've caught myself on that th- fucking thing so many times it's crazy but I tell you what my girlfriend you know what a kendo stick is right you know what kendo is yes yeah okay so my girlfriend yes. like I went to I her house sword fighting for those uninitiated yeah, yeah so I have no idea what it is it's, it's, like a, it's like a wooden sword made out kind of like made out of bound wicker so I saw one of those in her house and the top of it was under a blanket and I was like oh wow cool you got one of these like practice kendo sticks and I pulled it out it had a fucking kitchen knife taped onto the end of it I was like, I was like what the fuck are you doing and she was, was like it a, a weapon she, for like a burglar or something like yeah exactly she was like she was paranoid that someone was going to like kick down her door and like rape her and I was like dude you're in like one of the safest countries in the world like what the fuck are you worried about jesus uh, so i'm kind of rambling here do, do any of you guys have um any other thoughts on apocalypse or apocalyptic media yeah i have like the scariest apocalypse in my opinion which uh from like this short story from i think it's uh uh harlan elson or Harlan Ellison, like it's I have no mouth and I must scream, which is a little bit like the Terminator, where like a a, a genius AI takes over the world that kills almost everybody. But the scary thing is he just keeps like a couple of people alive and he makes them immortal and he just tortures them for like all eternity, which is kind of horrifying. So uh, that's not the way I want. I, see, that's not the way I want to go because you you can't go. It it doesn't end. So that's like one of the it's a great short story if you want to read uh, some science fiction. It's like only like 30 pages or something like that, and it's uh, it's really scary and it's really horrifying. And that's like the scariest apocalypse uh, story I've ever read. And maybe not the scariest apocalypse, but certainly um, the one that affected me the most, and something I I just can't bring myself to watch uh, anymore because it just it just fucks me up. Is the road. So, oh my god! Oh yeah! yeah. Oh god! So That's depressing. a depressing movie. So depressing. That's really a Holy depressing movie. Holy shit! Jeez, what yeah. a good movie. Yeah, great, but I never want to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I've seen it once. That's enough. God yeah. damn it! I don't think I can take it one more time. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard the book is even more depressing. So that's how is that possible? Every... How is that even possible? I have no idea because it's longer. I think that's. that's is that more thing. depressing than? Oh my god! I think I want to kill myself after watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's how depressed I am. Yeah, how can the book it's more really depressing? depressing? It's a surefire kill or something. Ah. It may, maybe the, the 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 apocalypse will actually come. When like multiple people read the road, and then everybody yeah. will just commit suicide after that book, or just yeah. just lose the will to keep on living. <laughs> Holy shit! We we didn't even talk about which the Mark Wahlberg uh, 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 movie shit from about Shyamalan. The happening yeah. trees are gonna kill us. That's the that's the, that's also horrifying <laughs> because it's so stupid. And then, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you, you know, such a stupid way. It's, an, you it's know another when, one of those fucking things where like something happens, and then two weeks away, two weeks later, it just goes away. Yeah. <laughs> well, it do, it do, it it doesn't. It just moves to a different city or something for some reason. I have no idea, but it's, yeah, I think it's it, really at stupid. the end they show really Paris stupid. or something, and then the same people, uh, you know, have the same uh, uh, experience, the same behavior, uh, where they just stand and walk backwards or stuff. But you know. It's it's funny because I was making fun of uh, how unthreatening uh, Roland Emmerich's uh, apocalypse is um, earlier because like people were running away from the frost and in a fucking happening they're running away from the wind. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. It's so stupid. But you have. Hey, oh my god! How how do you you can't make that 
threatening. It looks just just funny and stupid. And you put Mark Wahlberg in there, it gets even funnier. And it's like, yes. Yo, you're trying to kill me? I Are you trying to kill me? What? Really no. funny, actually, no. uh, movies. What? It's no. just really funny. Yeah. yeah, man. I think Mark Wahlberg, as I've mentioned before, is like one of the hottest and coldest actors. When he's good, he's fucking great. When he's bad, he's just terrible. <laughs> he's just fucking awful. And in the happening, he's like, he's he's like got that thing where he's always walking around. If you notice, he's always walking around with his mouth fucking wide open. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're in an apocalypse yeah, that deals with the wind. Why would you walk away with your mouth open all the time? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to catch cool. some wind here. <laughs> but yeah. Also, I, I don't remember if I've seen it in any good movies besides The Departed. Who no, that, I Heart the Huckabees was very good. He was hilarious in that. I don't know that one. The Fighter. I like The he Fighter, was also good but in that. that's mostly because of Christian Bale, not really that much about no. the Need to watch that. I think he was good in in the fighter. I think everybody was good in the fighter. It's was he in the remake movies. of the Italian Job, or was that someone else? Yeah, that was him. Just stay away from Max Payne, and you will be alright. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. With that, we've actually come to the end of the show. So please join us next time. The fishing trawler dredges us back up to the surface. Until then, this is the Radiophonic Sea Creatures tuning out. <laughs>